Honestly, you're right. I'm, I'm not heard. Heard. concerned. Well, and I think. Teresa, how you doing? My inclination is yeah, yeah, what yeah, I found yeah. out is that we need to yeah. continue this regardless. Yeah. Melody was just basking in the sun in Orlando or something. It was a conference. Mm -hmm. I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone today. Um, we've got a, a fairly long agenda, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before you, you have um, your proposed agenda, but before we get started, I'd like to officially welcome Rick Young. As an official board member now, a voting board member, and Rick, uh, we're glad to have you, and we, we have been glad to have you. <laughs> now, you can, now you can yeah. actually uh, tell us what we're doing right or wrong. Um, so again, welcome, and we're delighted that you're, you're part of this. Um, next order of business is the adoption of the agenda, and um, 
everyone I know has had a copy of it. If you have any questions, we can discuss that now. Otherwise, we would need a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 How's it feel? Hey, good. All right. <laughs> I say it with the, <coughs> the money's good too. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Checks Checks in the, the mail. mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Give that I'll first. Be sure not to catch it. Yeah. 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 Nothing pays off like public service. Okay. Next order of business. Uh, we're going to do an official uh, administration of oath, oath of office. Um, we were told that, I guess, Glenn, if you want to elaborate on it, that's the best And just plan. doing a review, we think in the abundance of caution, it's best for everybody to take an oath. And so if you'll stand at your place, um, Deputy City Clerk um, um, Carolyn, will, uh, and who's the official clerk to this board, will administer the oath of office. She'll give the instructions about left hand and right hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's the left hand on the Bible, right hand up. And then repeat after me, except state your name as your name instead of state your name. I state your name. I I name. Do, you do solemnly swear, swear, solemnly swear, swear that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As authority director. As authority director. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Need yes. everyone to sign their oath. And now we're on the payroll. Pass it back. As soon as you sign the oath. That's right. <laughs> and if you'll pass it down here to the clerk, the clerk. that'll be one. Okay. Okay. Uh, next order of business is going to be the uh, approval of the minutes. You have before you the December 11th, 2014 authority meeting minutes. If there are no changes or any uh, errors, uh, we will need a motion to adopt the minutes. Make the motion to adopt the minutes. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. All right. Next order of business is a strategic work of our authority, and uh, we have with us Susan Baptist. Susan, the floor is yours. She's going to uh, give us a full report and a presentation on the Winterfest. I am. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, on behalf of the Jacksonville Recreation and Parks Department, I want to just thank you again for your support. Uh, your support really allowed us to provide a, a phenomenal event to the community this winter, and hopefully you'll agree after you see. If you haven't already heard all the great things we did, hopefully you will see it here now. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Jacksonville, uh, we offered Jacksonville's Winter's Fest on December 2nd this past year. Uh, that's our new little mascot. And we uh, hired a sand sculpture artist, and she took it upon herself to do the very popular Olaf, so you'll see him around. Uh, we, as similar to last year, we did the sledding, and you can see the kids had a great time, but we've added, also this year, we were able to add some ice sledding, ice <coughs> snow, and skating. So we were able to bring in a company that did some skating as well. So it was a, a lot of activities, a lot of fun stuff going on. Again, you can see the little picture down there. That is new for us, and that's a synthetic ice skating rink that we were able to provide. They had a great time. So uh, there's a list of all the different things we had in one play area. Some other things we offered were games, activities, arts and crafts. I have to say we have some phenomenal support from the community and some other areas uh, that want to support our community efforts. So Lowe's did a huge, uh, a really large arts and crafts thing. They ran out of supplies, went back to their store on Yop Road, got some more, brought it back. So they did some great stuff for us. So that's one area. Uh, new this year, one of our challenges, uh, obviously, that we want to try and do is provide <coughs> heads and beds. So we were able to partner up with the Crystal Coast 
uh, Crafters Guild that is in the area, and we were able to work with them to provide an arts and crafts show. They offered it at the Commons. They started on Friday, Saturday, and ended on Sunday. So we were able to bring in vendors from all over the area. We think it was successful. They were very pleased. The vendors loved the venue, which was the Commons, because it was indoors, and they were able to set up on Friday and carry on through Sunday. So they thought that was very, very helpful for them. So some of the things you can see they did there were the talent show, cookie show, uh, cookie contest, and some other neat things that they had and some really nice uh, vendors. This is a list of where the vendors came from. Uh, they came from all over and the, the, the guild does a real good job of having, um, they're all supposed to be handmade items. So they did a good job of the vendors and some really neat things. So as you can see, we did target some vendors from outside of the areas. And what we found was, is those vendors brought in their families to enjoy the weekend. So we did have some families staying in hotels. So that was a really nice, we weren't sure if it was gonna be other people coming for the weekend, obviously for test destination for us, but the vendors did have some families stay in those hotels, so. Entertainment for the event, we had some, uh, the New River Harmony Barbershop Cor uh, Chorus does a great job. Bell Fork Elementary, <coughs> Commons Elementary, and Clyde Irwin Elementary. And I'll just say that this year we had beautiful weather, beautiful, beautiful weather, so that helped us as well. So those kids and families were able to come out. We finished the evening off with a, our tree lighting that the mayor came to and helped us flip the switch on that uh, nice big 21 foot tree there that we bring in every year. So it finished up with the flotilla starting, the light, the tree goes on, the flotilla starts, and it's just a really nice evening. <coughs> Uh, we do a survey for everybody that comes in and we try and get feedback from you know where they come from what they enjoyed how they heard about it uh, so these are some of those results of what we hear from those people when they come in and they come in from all over the surrounding areas and then you know as far as you can see there this is the wilmington this is just for the event on saturday so this is what we captured on saturday's event this is the breakdown of how they kind of heard about it. I will tell you it was a busy day. We were packed. We had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people. So Teresa was there, I know, and she... Lines were crazy. It was, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was a busy day. But uh, we, had, we gave out 4,000 wristbands <coughs> just to kids. So you can imagine for every child there's at least one parent. Our numbers, we feel pretty comfortable that, that, that we... Uh, that we had a good numbers and we ran out of wristbands <coughs> we were marking an excellent at that point after 4,000 so we had a, a great turnout and you can see from how they heard about it a lot of it was online but then the radio was a great one and you'll hear play here in a minute the radio spot if you didn't hear it all all throughout the winter it might come back to you here in a minute as oh there it is but it, it's a really great effective um, effective spot for us and I will just give kudos to Teresa at Viremark her help is phenomenal. It is just the way she helps us put the word out and really knows what needs to be out there for people to hear about it is she does a great job. So thank you, Teresa. Hi, uh, Susan. Yes. <clears throat> uh, as you know, my home is in Boston, uh -huh. or was, and so I noticed that they one of the things they wanted was more snow, so I've made arrangements with the city okay. of Boston. Great. Bring them lots of snow, but you're going to have to do it the next week. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Hagen, you're always a help. Thank you so much. You just know what we need right there, don't you? Okay. Uh, as you can see, uh, the help from Biomark, this is how we broke it out as far as what we were able to get with your support. Our, your support is 8000 but you can really see the added value there is over 22000 and we felt every minute of it. I mean, every every spot that was out there, every ad, every, really everything, it really came in tenfold because the event was a great success. Uh, obviously, we do other stuff internally. We get things, you know, to the school, social media, um, internally, uh, Glenn and Lisa and Kevin and all of those guys do a great job helping us get the word out. But these are just some of the, some of the things that um, we do. Here's some uh, items for you to see. Social media was just, that's the arts and crafts show. We did market that separate because they had so much going on as well in addition to the Winterfest. Some items in the paper. All right, I'm gonna just hit play here. No, they'll do it for you. Okay, here we go. Mr. Grinch, this is Sam calling about the 2014 Winterfest in Jacksonville. Well, Sam, Grinches don't do Winterfest. That's what Mr. Scrooge said. I have him on the line, too. Grinch! 
Scrooge. I want to invite you both to Winterfest, the first weekend of December. No, thanks. Saturday, December 6th from 2 to 8 at Riverwalk Park, they're sledding on real snow and an ice skating rink. Ah, humbug! Reindeer games, a petting zoo, train and hay rides, Santa's workshop, it's all free. Interesting. Plus, you might like the Winterfest Arts and Craft Show. That's on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Jacksonville Commons Rec Center. All original handcrafted arts. Pretty cool stuff. Well, back up. Did you say ice skating? Not to mention premium coffee and hot chocolate from Andy Mart. I do like a good hot chocolate. So, what do you say? I think I see Winterfest in my Christmas future. My heart is growing. See you at the 2014 Winterfest in Jacksonville. And thank Andy Mart and Marine Chevrolet for the support while you're there. Yeah. It was very nice. And I will say, we were all, our heart was growing on and on in the office. It was pretty fun, but great job to the production crew that did that. So, thank you. Um, we, had some, we had some great sponsors. We were able to secure a Handy Mart as one of our major sponsors also for the event, thanks to Teresa. But it allowed us to really focus on the ice skating rink. I'll be honest, the ice skating rink was an added thing. It, it, um, it, it added a lot to the event and without the support of what we're able to <coughs> divert for marketing through uh, Viamark and then additional sponsorship. The snow, the ice skating, the sand sculpture, the pony rides, the petting zoo, uh, Santa, I mean all of that is free to the, co to the community and it's all for them to enjoy. And I think we did a, a fairly good job with letting them enjoy Can that. Can I ask so. a question please? Yes sir. What was the average amount of the sponsorship? Uh, from Viam, well, for Handy Mart. Each one, I'm just overall. Overall, we probably five about nine. well total. It average is five thousand. Yes, sir. <coughs> Three nine. Yes, sir. So, um, so yeah, we were real fortunate on that. And then this kind of gives you an idea. You can see right there. So right there, sponsorship from Marine Chevrolet and from Handy Mart. And then I didn't, um, yeah, and then you can see where our expenditures, expenditures were as far as some of the, um, the, you know, where everything kind of fell into place there. But it's a great event. We're fortunate to be able to provide it. I think the public enjoyed it, and um, that's, kind of, that's kind of where we're at. So in conclusion, we want to keep offering those programs, those activities. Obviously, I think uh, with your help and support, we're going to keep advertising, getting people here. and getting heads in beds. I think the Arts and Crafts Fair was a, a nice addition. It did get some people in, into the area. Um, we'll, we're going to keep working on other activities that we can possibly expand on, logistically, like a run or something along those lines. We'll keep, we'll keep working on that one. We, we're logistically, we want to make sure that, as a staff, we can manage it. We want to manage our growth effectively and not overwhelm ourselves. Partnership with the Guild was nice because they handled that. They handled the comments, they handled it. So uh, it allowed us to keep our energies at, down at Riverwalk Crossing Park where the event was taking place. But overall, we're very pleased. And um, yeah, I think that we had a nice comment there at the end there. So we hope to capture everything on that. Uh, any questions for me? Uh, thank you again. And hopefully we'll just keep doing what we do. Any questions? Any hey, thoughts? Hey, yes. Susan, um, was there a cost? No. There, there was no cost. No cost. It's free. free. And did I see 36 room nights that you... I, I, it said 34 family members 34. were okay. from the vendors. So I don't think they were all room specific, but it's 34 <coughs> family members of the vendors. Okay. Thank you. I did not. We don't really have vendors, so we did not charge other than uh, the food vendors. We charge $100. But we did not. This is a little bit of a different event from our Jacksonville's Jamboree where we offset that with vendors. This is really about uh, a community event for everybody to enjoy. So we don't have the retail vendors per se or anything like that. We just offer it to everybody to enjoy. Sorry, Major. I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, we appreciate I'm part of the Breakfast Rotary Club. And we had, and we sponsored the flotilla. We had 16 boats, which was more boats than most of the areas that had for a flotilla. And um, the numbers that we had this year was way up. So being at the same evening as everything is the Christmas uh, event and everything and having our flotilla is growing, is growing every year. Right. That's great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Susan, thank you so much. It's a wonderful thank report, you. and um, I'm delighted that the event continues to grow and uh, get bigger every year. So thank you.
Okay, next uh, order of business is our tour, uh, discussion <coughs> on the Jazz in the City request uh, before you. Um, I'll let Glenn Hoare get uh, go over the request. Absolutely. Glenn. At the time that you awarded the funds, a request was made that you allow for some reconsideration of that at some time. Um, this, the staff that you have um, assigned to this task has been working heavily with them, most in the form of Teresa Beecham, in trying to make this a really nice event as it was. And therefore, the request before you is for specifically for pipe draping, light stage, and other items that would transform the American Legion building into a club-like um, atmosphere so that it would be a venue that would be appropriate um, for an ad a activity such as this. Um, so there's some background information that we provided to you on page nine, um, excuse me, of 37 of your document. Um, you can see we did get some bids. We did not get a lot of them because of the um, haste in time for getting this done. Um, and so we are asking that you consider that. Additionally, while well, uh, we would like you to go ahead and approve, um, the date was changed from the original date that you were given. And so it would be nice to have that on the record to go ahead and approve that movement um, for February 6th and 7th. So, Mr. Chairman, I stand ready to answer any questions. Ms. Beecham does too. And um, we have some other people around the table who have some knowledge and expertise on this matter. Thank you, Glenn. I'll make a motion that we authorize the date of change from 6th to 6th and 7th. And what about the request? February. The funding request as well? Or well I'm going to do it separate. Funding. Okay. We'll do it separate. Proper. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion uh, on the I floor. Know what happens to the things that we're going to buy to make it look a very nice place. Okay. We'll finish this now. Yeah, let's, let's, let's finish this up. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries on the date change now. On the question, vote. all this is rental. Only um, a small amount is in there of the total is for some <coughs> perishable flowers. <coughs> this is renting. We clearly could not buy this much pipe draping lights no, and other things for that, type of, um, for that type of funding um, in there. So this is a rental and we I'd did get... I'd rather see it rented than try to yes. store it. <coughs> so the request is for $6,000. That is correct and we're asking that you take... Or up um, to, I'm sorry. Up to $6,000. Um, and we're asking that you, um, your motion include that would be from the Tourism Development Fund. I move that we appropriate up to $6,000 from the uh, Tourism Development Fund for this project. A second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, who, who is receiving the bids? Who, who did? What, what, um, Ms. Beecham worked with us to get them. We called around. We got the vendor that the chamber had used out there. We called um, Jones Onslow. We got the person that they had used out there. We got some other names and just tried to get them to get back <coughs> with us to get that. So we did receive them. This wasn't a formal bid process. We were just trying to do things as uh, quickly as possible to, um, to get the good prices. Does this seem reasonable to the folks that have worked with this vendor? Very much so. The, the prices were comparable and <coughs> they um, were more than willing to work with us and gave us some discounts in order to be here. So, okay. Glenn, um, I, if I may just insert what I've been working with. Was this company involved in the Oktoberfest setup as well? They've been involved in many different activities and they have done work at the American Legion before, mm -hmm. which gives them also some yeah. understanding about what was needed. And let me let me just say, I've, having gone to the American Legion, and I'm sure everybody's been out there, it is a huge place to, and it's a monster to decorate. Very uh, big. Uh, and so uh, it's not a small, small place. The acoustics we worked, you know, we worked on and everything. So I'm very, very proud and kudos to Glenn Carmella and I Teresa. A, I have a question in Thank regards you. to the anticipated sponsorship funding for next year. Do you foresee that this year's event will spark uh, a greater number of people wanting to sponsor this event yes. next year? And the reason for that is this next year will be our third year mm -hmm. and we want, you know, as an authority, we've got to sort of think about we're an incubator but we don't, the problem is we can't, from my perspective, we can't keep adding more and more. We have to figure out a way to sort of reduce on some of the incubator events so that we can start new ones. We're going to have something on that and a little bit more in the agenda. Okay. But basically, if you'll recall, we did put into some contracts 
that they have to save some money back that can be used to help starting toward that contribution. It's not a requirement, but we're asking that they start doing that. Um, in this case, because of the change of venue and because of the number of items, we don't anticipate they're going to make that, that target, but we do expect them to come close to, um, you know, this is going to be more than breaking even, which is what we want to okay. see happen. Thank you. You have before you a request for six thousand dollars. You got a motion? Oh, that we were in discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Before then, I'm happy that Ashley Backward has now joined us here. She had to run in from a doctor's. I'm <laughs> so. not prepared to be presenting at all, so, so I apologize on the appearance. Okay, That's next order of business is the Marine Corps Half Marathon Health and Fitness Expo. And we have with us Ashley. Thank you for uh, rushing. Or, uh, yeah, no problem. Here. And I'll just summarize fun. for you here. Um, obviously, we determined that that connection between the Marine Corps Half Marathon and having the expo downtown at the time of the Riverwalk Palooza was absolutely wonderful. And we still have to do shout out for um, Melody York, who hosted the first one of these. And we were sitting there when we did the old V8 slap on the head and said, my gosh, why don't we connect Riverwalk Palooza with the events of the packet pickup? So last year was edition one. Um, and we wanted to price that in such a way that it would be attractive to vendors who were basically, we were getting at the last minute. Uh, because many of these people make plans, you know, a long time out in, in, in the search there. And um, this year it is for the promotion of that event and for support of the, um, of the activity. Principally, as you saw, the rental of um, some items is not inexpensive, and that would be to cover the cost of the tent. Now, again, this is an incubation activity, and we do hope that they will eventually turn, off en turn out enough money that they'll pay for the tent and some other things themselves. But if you recall, we as a, you as an authority decided this was worthy of an event that you wanted to incubate this to get this thing going. So the request before you is for $10,000 um, from the salary unexpended um, into the sports development fund, a fund you have already given her power to tap, um, that would be for marketing up to $5,000 and up to $5,000 in support of the Marine Corps Half Marathon Health and Fitness Expo. So this yeah. will wipe out that $10,000 budget. Well, we have year. another item here. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing that up. So once you use that up, there's now, no more. Now, the expo will hit in the next fiscal year because the event's not until September. So the biggest thing that we're asking for kind of ahead of time is making sure that we can cover the cost of the tent. It only allows for about 20 vendor spots. So when we started adding up all the expenses and then breaking it down by vendors, we were looking at having to charge about 350 to 400 per, you know, per vendor. Um, and for a second year event that doesn't quite, I mean, there's just, there's some logistical things that vendors are wanting to ask questions about. We may not use that money. We are going to look into finding a sponsor for um, the tent, we're going to try and find a, um, maybe a pasta dinner, some other things that we can help offset. So this would be going into the next fiscal year. We just want to make sure that we're covered before we move forward and say we're definitely hosting and we've got everything covered. This is like on the, what we did for the Monford Point Group. You folks are not dealing with a budget that you can look at just for 12 months. You have to look at your activities a long time into the future because of the nature of having to promote and develop and so that's why we look beyond what is June 30th Understand. for things like this well I just I wanted to make sure that you guys yes. understand. even if it's for next fiscal year that mm -hmm. offset is just for the 10 grand that's all we have so once you use that that's it for that year well this would augment that 10 with with additional funds so that you would have the 10 plus this this funds that would that you would put in there for next year how, how do you um, augment? yeah how do you augment? well we would write the budget for you to adopt on june third before so you you're start. adding another ten thousand dollars another five aren't you? well this, this would be ten thousand dollars yes right yes sir so 10 plus 10 yes sir but you will make that decision they're just During asking that you, time. that's correct. Okay. They're just asking that you allocate funds so they can mm -hmm. know they're going to have the tent and know they're going to have the marketing money so they can go out and sell the uh, help yeah. and expo now. 
So the sorry. Go the total ahead. cost is twenty thousand is what we're saying, mm -hmm. right? The no. total cost of the event is ten. I think the confusion is, is historically we've always had like a ten thousand dollar pot for us to go to if and you're gonna see one that pops up. Um, so this is kind of above potentially above and beyond is what we're asking. But again, that's up to the discretion of this board on if And I just wanted case. to be clear with the board so that Absolutely. they understand what they're voting on. How did we do the 10s last year? Last year, well, in your budget, this current budget year and the prior budget year, you set up a sports promotion fund that the sports commission could tap into when they had opportunities to do so. Well, now we tapped into that money already this year to do the Marine Corps half marathon that was within this budget year in September, which is this current year. And so they're just asking for a commitment that you will allow them to use that. It may be that you don't have to make it twenty thousand dollars. It may be it's your choice. Yeah, it's your choice to do this as to what money you wish to allocate. They're just the the funding part here is so they can get the tent and they know you're going to help them with marketing so they can go out and sell the event. Well, then what I would suggest, Glenn, just to keep it simple, is that we're we're allocating that ten, and then come budget time. We we'll can hand, we can make that additional decision at that time, but they will have already allocated the ten that we normally put aside for them. It was, if you recall, we had some things yes. that got presented to you that come up quickly, <coughs> and for them to make a bid on them or well, something. And that's like my that. point. That so they're using up that whole ten for this particular event because mm -hmm. it's a worthwhile event and it and it has all the right features. Yes, just want to make sure they understand that 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 fund will be depleted unless we add two absolutely and we can handle that at budget time as a separate item but as of right now if we approve today that 10 is gone and the, the on page 43 is the total breakout should you know but um, what I gave you was the overview of that point Okay, well, I understand what the chairman is, is alluding to, and that is that once we do this, if we don't appropriate something later on, then we're finished for the next 12 months. And if something worthwhile does come up, we probably would have to take that on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, the big question, in my mind, the big question becomes if, if we're starting to generate these kinds of activities that are going to need front money, and I understand that concept, uh, and maybe at budget time we need to take a look at this fund and see if we can project if there's anything else coming down the road uh, and maybe increase that. But um, right now we're kind of mixing the oranges and apples a little bit. Well, perhaps then what well, the authority, and I'm working on the fly here, John and Gail, make sure I don't drive off the rails here. What They're looking for a commitment that you will help them with the tent and the marketing. There's $10,000 that you have for two years allocated to this fund. I would think that you all would be willing to make a statement that you can reasonably expect to allocate at least that much again in your future budget year and that your intent to fund the tent and those expenses and, and $5,000 for marketing. That's an option for you should you wish to do that. What we were doing was, was trying to prepare ourselves and just make it. And that's why easy. I just wanted full disclosure for the board so you understand. And then we've got revenue. <coughs> that's a whole separate, that's a whole separate, separate subject. subject. Yeah. Well, we didn't use the first year's allocation, did we? Mm -hmm. we, oh, used, yes. we used we used it for that uh, same event. Right. And then the year mm -hmm. before, we had that big tournament that we put it in reserve for. Okay. And then this current that's year, right. that the what now? And we never tapped into we never it the tapped very it. first year, the and second year. And the second year, yeah, the first year, no use of it whatsoever. Well, that's what I just said. And the second yeah. year, which is this current year, yeah, we, okay. we've already hit into right. it for some events and activities. Right. You know, as you said, it could be a sponsorship thing that could be handled in a different way, mm -hmm. being that it provides heads on beds and we can quantify that and all the, all the right things. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that we can just keep adding to a pool of money that just continues to grow. I don't think that that would fly with the board. And I don't want to represent that they are asking for I'm not speaking for the board, so I wanted to be clear on that. 
And like I said, our hope is that we're able to offset. I mean, well, honestly, I would rather I would all the good not to come to you All the good intentions <laughs> there, and and the and there's great value to the event. It's not about that. I just want the board to understand what this line item is, and for everyone mm -hmm. to have full disclosure here. It's a great event. It's worthwhile. Heads on beds, and I mean, I think this year it's going to be even greater. So mm -hmm. uh, there's no question about the event. What is the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that uh, we approve a transfer of $10,000 from the Tourism Promotion Specialist line item to the Sports Development Fund to provide for the marking up to $5,000 and as needed up to $5,000 of support for the Marine Corps Half Marathon. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? I guess we had the discussion before on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Ashley, thank you so much. Oh, I'm still she here. Got, Don't worry. Oh, you got another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, that's Ashley. good to hear, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, you're stuck with you. I'm going to let her describe the last <laughs> months of this <laughs> before I do. But basically what we're asking for here <laughs> is for $7,000 <laughs> in this current year for a bid for the International Senior Se Softball Association. Right, I couldn't find my right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to let her describe that to you and the potential of Heads on Beds. I will call your attention to page 45, which has a more narrative um, explanation of it, too. So the International Senior Softball Association is based out of Virginia. Um, they host across the nation as well as their executive director hosts um, the World Games. He's their executive director as well. So experience in hosting the event is not an issue or anything that we should be concerned with. Um, we were never considered a destination for them. They did not want to come here. Um, similar to a color vibe, they didn't feel like the demographics were there. Um, weren't quite sure size of the city, hotel rooms, fields, um, so a lot of negatives were kind of coming our way. However, after speaking with them um, and showing them what our fields are capable of, um, getting testimonials from people that actually play on our fields, uh, they finally conceded and realized that yes, we would be a valuable market to them. Um, so they decided with the sheer fact that most of their players are veterans, that Memorial Day would be a really great time to have a tournament here. Um, it affords their families and a couple of extra days in the area to tour around, enjoy the beaches, enjoy the Memorial Gardens, um, as well as give them an extra day for play if needed. Um, this was one that I brought up to the Hotel Motel Association um, and didn't want to give them too much information ahead of time. Uh, we have one team or two teams that play here locally in Jacksonville. Otherwise, there's two or three down in Wilmington and the rest are coming from outside of the area. Um, included in the packet is the fact we're only going to be the third tournament in um, North Carolina with Charlotte and Raleigh being the other two. Um, we're the only one in North Carolina that month. Um, he does feel like it'd be a very good draw and this is something that he does want to grow. So as we see partnerships, um, you know, Susan met and talked with our board, as we see a partnership with other fields coming on or coming available, um, he's very interested in seeing this grow into a 40 to 60 team tournament as the years pass, but we have to start somewhere and he'd like to keep it in one facility, um, which would be at the Commons Recreation Center. So our request is for um, up to 7000 Again, this is another one that we're going to see if we can find a sponsor to help offset some of the cost of the um, awards, especially year one. But we do have to pay for the officials. They take care of most everything else. Um, and the City of Parks and Recs did partner with us um, to provide the facilities during year one um, as a free facility just again to grab their attention, show them and showcase what we have to offer and then let it grow from there. Thank you, Ashley. And this is for this fiscal yes, year. Yes, for this which Memorial will Day. We also add heads on beds for this fiscal year. <laughs> well, let me speak to the heads on beds aspect of this proposal. I actually play in this league, and we just came back from Tampa. Um, this is basic. This is senior softball, which means that 90% of the participants are retired, so they bring their families. Uh, my my team has 20 members. We took 18 to Tampa. Fifteen of them took their spouses. We all stayed in a motel. We all ate. As a matter of fact, one night we went out together, and that bill must have been 
couple of them. <laughs> but the point is that if you multiply that by the number of teams, now ours is a little bit high, but I, I would say based on the tournaments that I've been to, <clears throat> that the average is about 12 members with their spouses per team. So if you get 20 teams, do the math. This is big, big business, trust me. And they will fill the motels up, they'll fill up the restaurants. We have, I've been to maybe 15 different venues around the country, well, I say around the country, East Coast. We have the best setup location-wise for restaurants and motels of any of the venues I've been to. Uh, for instance, in Tampa, I stayed 20 minutes away. Um, when we go up to Virginia, and you would think, well, Virginia, that's pretty easy, but it's in the metropolitan area of Washington, we stay about 30 minutes away. So uh, the, vet, the setup that we have here, I, I believe, believe personally that when the teams get here and see our setup, they will want to come back here year after year after year, because this is the best setup you can get. But the big news is you're probably talking at least 100 to 150 motel rooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's on Memorial Weekend? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it will it always be, let's say, if it was a... Okay. Yeah. So my concern is Memorial Weekend is a pretty good weekend for us already. I mean, that would be the only concern that I would mm -hmm. have. I would like to try it myself just to see what it does do the first year. Mm -hmm. You know. We have more product, too coming to the market. Too. That's right. So, so we could very well need it as time goes on. Maybe some other old meat by then, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some other old Can I, I have a question. Uh, the public may not be familiar with senior softball. What is the age group uh, that we're talking about? They start at 50. Mm -hmm. um, and what they do is they, they split up the weekend. The 50s, and it's every five years, the 50s, 55s, and 60s play on the weekends. When I say the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. The uh, 60s, 65, 70s, 75s, and 80s, <laughs> well, there are some that, uh, usually play Wednesday and Thursday and Friday or Thursday and Friday. So they split it up. Mm -hmm. So the breakdown are, are 50 <laughs> to 80s. Uh, there are two 80s teams that do travel. And um, they were not in Tampa, but we had five 75 teams and four 70 teams. So uh, that's the breakdown. Yeah, and, and I will I will speak to it. I'm being over uh, 50. fifty. Yes, <laughs> uh, I've been to a couple of tournaments myself, and uh, well as Ken. And I'm telling you something. Went to Charlotte, Monroe. Uh, we gave something up there for the state. Uh, it is. It's a money maker, uh, and the price the the. <laughs> The price or the the entry fee is is it pays for itself when you see people out there 60, 70, 80 years old running down fly balls. <laughs> it is one of the amazing, most amazing thing you ever want to see. Great athletes and everybody has fun, yeah. uh, and they do bring their families. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a worthwhile venture. Grandchildren too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, they do. Oh yes, yeah. yes. All right. Well, sounds like a no-brainer. Yeah. Need a motion. Go ahead, Rick. Step out there. <laughs> um, I'll make the motion that the authority approve a transfer. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The transfer of 7000 from the Tourism Promotion Specialist line item <clears throat> to the Sports Development Fund to support a bid and costs associated with the Jacksonville Onslow Sports Commission effort to create the ISSA sanctioned Memorial Day Senior Softball Tournament as a reoccurring event. I'll second that. So they make it easy for you. <laughs> I'll second it. Rick's Motion and a second. Rick's oh, second from Rick. Any further discussion? Well, I would add. I would want add one caveat, and I'm sure they spoke to you about this. This is this is a inaugural tournament, so they have to get the word out to the teams and everything. Um, if this doesn't go as big this year as the numbers that we are, are, are in here, that doesn't mean anything um, because they have, to, they have to start. So you may, you may only have 10 or 15 teams. But it's a good organization, and they run a, a good tournament, uh, and they will build on it. Now, having said all of that, you're concerned about Memorial Day weekend. 
once they know that a community is interested they'll work with the community and they will switch dates in the future if there's open dates so i wouldn't be too overly concerned about the memorial day one they thought it was a good idea to attach the military aspect yeah. to it mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see how that okay. all right all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. motion carries thank you ashley <laughs> all right um Next order of business is a status report from Carmela and Teresa. Carmela? Yeah, we're going to tag team um, okay. to report. Um, we are, um, have a lot of exciting things to report about the events coming up, but just to recap briefly, the events that have taken place um, in the fall and winter. Um, we have attempted to sit down with each of those folks uh, beyond the after action report, each of those groups beyond the after action report, and uh, make sure that they um, understood what the authority, you know, what they applied for, what they actually happened, and sort of the differences and lessons learned, and, and go through that type of stuff with each group. So um, uh, those folks should be ready for the application period coming this year, which I'll talk about in just a second. But I'm going to let Teresa talk about the events that are upcoming. Okay, some of the events that we have uh, that we're currently working on, Jazz in the City, uh, is this Saturday. On the seventh, I hope everybody can attend. It will be it'll be a fabulous show. The um, ticket sales are going really well. Um, I can already say we've certainly surpassed last year, just in the ticket sales, and we're getting calls daily from the marketing. So I uh, really expect that to grow probably this week, 25, 30, 30 more percent. They had to print some additional tickets, hard copies. So let's look for a good event for that the bridal expo is on the 21st of february that is coming along the uh, promotion is set that hits the air this week for the ultimate bridal giveaway so any bride that registers she will um can also register for a free wedding so we're doing a wedding up to fifty five hundred dollars we've gotten probably eight vendors involved and they are supplying you know things from the dress the tux the rings and that sort of thing so that's kind of a nice little element to add to that this year the rock for vets promotion uh, i believe they sent in a request they moved the date to may the 9th there have cha they've changed the event and we will have more details coming at the next meeting and they have partnered with your army and we're doing that they're hosting that at the american legion building that will be a great event. It's a big beer tasting. They just did one in Greenville. It's really, really tightly run. They did it in Greenville and put 3,500 people through last weekend <coughs> and uh, through the Civic Center up there. And they have um, no issues, no problems to speak of at all. And they had 68 vendors from all over the state, of which 45 stayed in hotels. And I didn't get a count from their um, participants they don't you know they're not run like we are it's a different deal so we should hopefully we will make you proud um the art block is coming along nicely also that is in april april 18th remember they didn't do the event last year this year things have moved along and they have some new committees and things are in place and that will be in this block out in front of city hall for the whole <coughs> city block um, all kinds of artisans and crafters and all sorts of things from pottery not just your typical like you would see at a festival so it's it's the painters and people selling also you know what they do so that will be fabulous and then the next one coming up will be the Jacksonville Jamboree so we are working on numerous events and working hard for you and your money great thank you Teresa thank you for all you do for us thank you Very for the partnership appreciate it any questions Your marketing events and all those events are posted and published? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a nice tracking story in the newspaper about it, too. That helps. <laughs> that helps. Helps a lot. I know Jazz in the City is being well promoted. Posted there. Yes. Posters and the, the words, commercials. Mm -hmm. I've heard plenty of them. Engaged. Honestly, has already started their advertising. And um, we've worked with. Uh, art block and I know I've seen the jamboree everywhere at this yeah, point so <laughs> they're doing a good job too. Okay, uh, Carmela, does that cover you through 12 or do you have other stories? Um, I have a little more to add. Okay, back to you. Um, 
we are ready to begin with your approval of what I'm about to present. Um, begin accepting application for fiscal year 16 um, uh, pro tourism promotion fund applications. Um, just wanted to note a few things that we've uh, we, we've discussed previously in meetings, but run them by you before we release the meet, uh, the actual application again. And so, um, we will be holding um, a little bit different than what we've done in previous years so far. Um, two informational sessions for events and, and activities that want to apply for the fund. Uh, one will be for recurring events, sort of veteran events that know. Um, you know, know how it works, how, you know, to present the staff and meet with staff and that type of thing. Um, and then one for new events that are just coming on board. And I'll get to that a little bit more in a meeting um, in a minute. But um, we also are um, changing some prior year information in the application. So last year, after last year's application process, um, the authority members specifically asked for um, having things such as actual turnout totals and heads on beds information in the application so you could review it at the same time you were um, reviewing their request for the coming year. And so we've included all that information in the application going out um, and um, made sure the reflections um, are uh, noted in the application as well as putting um, emphasis this year on professional management um, and applications. We've always, um, since the fund has started, asked that competent individuals be in charge of events. But what we found out is that maybe there needs to be a little bit more of a bridge between an idea and reality, especially for um, <laughs> especially for incubation events um, that are newer events that maybe we could um, um, bring some consulting in or something to help them with event management per se and um, for veteran events we want to ensure that that um, I need to be careful about what I say <laughs> <laughs> I that um, they're able to run it in the future in the way that authority would approve the authority would approve of and so if if we have been um, through events in previous years that we we know need some help, we want to be able to you know note that while they're in the application period before we get any further. So um, Glenn can add to that if he well, it's already in your number seven <laughs> criteria about competent and professional um, development there of the of the idea. And so what we're asking for is um, at the end of this is for your approval to give that a heavier weight. Um, than what we have given it in the past. <coughs> I um, have no problem with that. <laughs> more than better. Well, let me, uh, uh, you still have some more information? Yes, and um, just real quickly, um, for reincurring events, we also want to make sure that we're moving away from support so much, especially if it's occurred for two or three years, so any support funds and just moving, moving to a marketing focus. And so, um, The review process will be, of course, for previous events. We'll split the two. It's coming from the same pot of money, but new events will be reviewed in terms of other new events that is that they're um, co competing with for the funds, and then previous veteran events will be reviewed in that category. And um, we just would like um, to know when, if you would like to um, review the applications in a special meeting, as was done in the previous year. Or do you want to do it at your normal um, April meeting? I'm okay with doing it in April. You guys okay with that? Or do you want to view it? Well, April's fine. I, I guess. The, well, you guys are going to have your normal screening process. With yes, your with the it's already it scheduled. To us. So okay. with us, it's going to be the recommended. Mm -hmm. So you will, you will have already screened the non-applicable. In a previous year, the impetus for that statement was y'all wanted enough time to digest the application and to review them. And so that's why we've started now, and we're getting them out now, that we felt like that um, in, in doing the application, we really needed your buy-in for some of the changes that we're asking for that Carmela has detailed here, so that we can put those out, and we don't want to get ahead of you folks. 
So that's, well, that's where that is. When do you propose that they will be ready for We a have scheduled all the meetings and review period and review panels for um, for times that would end by mid-March. Mid and so you have a meeting scheduled, I believe, now for March 26th and also one in April. Your March 26th meeting, yes, is the one in which we are hoping that we can get something to you at that point for either you to do action on or if you wish to receive them and then take action on them at your April 30th meeting. Well, that's what it's our we get it yes. prior, a meeting prior to adoption meeting time. We just want to make sure we're giving you enough time to consider it. And then, of course, that <coughs> your staff has enough time to receive. Um, we put together some nice review panels on this and the, consequently that we can uh, do something with and that. I think you're moving in the right direction. You know, <clears throat> as we continue to fund some of these events, you know, we're under more and more of a microscope every year. So our criteria has to, has to be in line. And, and, you know, these events have to meet that criteria. Yes. I mean, we yeah. have no, no room for error. Right, and, and they don't, and I like the general concept of weaning off of your, uh, your more... Uh, support. Uh, yeah, the weaning off the support for your more established events, which is what our philosophy has been. Uh, the other thing, Glenn, is with all this, um, you, and uh, meaning the, the, the committee and the group, you have to have a deadline. In other words, when these applications will, like, be in like a drop dead type deadline date. What is the anticipated deadline for those March, people who are March third. We're planning on releasing it upon your approval. Should be ready this afternoon, and um, okay. yeah, we are planning on getting it back March third. Don't uh, holding the panels within the next two weeks, okay. and having everything ready for your review. Right, and, and I wanted that to come out just for for the public's sake. Those groups who are interested, you know, so that they can sort of uh, schedule it and everything. That's why I asked that question. Mr. Well, Chairman. thank you. Thank I, you, Ernie. I have a question for the review board. Is the review board prepared to, when they review the applications, are they, is the review board prepared to decline some applications because they have not met the criteria that's been established? We have, we have had that, staff has had that conversation this year because um, of pre experience with previous years. And those, I mean, that speaks to some of the, the uh, recommendations that we proposed to you today. Um, so it would make it possible to have a criteria to say no or to decline if necessary. And so. But I want to make it clear, you folks are the only yeah, ones that right. decline, but your staff it. is willing to make a recommendation of no fund um, to activities um, and we, we stand ready to follow those guidelines. Well, I understand that part, but during the review process, if there's an area or, or somewhere on the application or wherever that says this organization did not meet the criteria set out in the previous year, then we would look at that and we would make, yeah, we would say, okay, yeah, I understand And I wanted that. to say to you, we've met with um, a number, and I bet you Lorette and Teresa can certainly shake their head in the affirmative. We have heard a lot of proposals that never get to you um, from from our conversations with them about reality and what's necessary yeah. to go forward. Well, I, like Ernie, I'm I'm a little, you know, I'm a little concerned about the ones that we've already funded. If they're not following the guidelines and, the, and what we've asked, then I'm not interested in funding them at all. To be honest. Well, I think strategically we have to remember what our what our focus is and and what our mission is and it doesn't mean an event is not worthwhile just no. because we do not fund it. It's not, it's not that's not <coughs> at all it's that we have a certain mission to accomplish and then we have a criteria with that mission and if it doesn't fall within that it's just unfortunate but but you know again we are under the state microscopic eye of how we distribute our funds and how that how that translates into uh, the tourism industry, uh, i.e., you know, hotels and, and, and restaurant tours and economic <coughs> development, and um, so we have to be very cognizant of what what our directives are, and that doesn't mean an event is bad. 
So I think that's a, a great question because there may be events that we have supported that are just not fitting that that sort of criteria and we've given them the opportunity to we have to make sure that that committee can look at that and strategically say look we just can't do it but um, or can't recommend I guess is the right absolutely the right word so so what we're asking for is um, consensus we don't think this requires a vote but we are looking for for us to proceed. I think we have felt the consensus here, and um, unless we're reading anything wrong on that, we're going to proceed with the directions that Carmela has outlined. I think we have consensus. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Carmela, is that it? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Um, now we want to talk about the destination study. I'll turn it over to Glenn. This is quick. Um, at, at your December meeting, you asked for a review to be made that is now scheduled, and consequently, it's going to take us um, a few um, hours to get that together as to um, what to do. We anticipate that coming out of this the review session, there might be some other action the staff <coughs> would be required to do. And so we merely are asking you, do you want to have a special meeting on February 12th, or do you want to wait until um, the March 26th meeting uh, I mean, excuse me, the, the February um, 26 meeting um, to, to do that as it is. Obviously, we, we, we sense the urgency and the need for this. Um, we know the legislature is in session at this time, and so that would give the, um, um, the vendor, um, whoever is um, recommended by that um, to this group, um, time for us to prepare those documents and get them in for action. Um. I would recommend that, that we would try to schedule a special meeting for the 12th, if at all possible. There is a sense of urgency in we this. We need to do it as early as we can. Are you going to be in Rick? So, Glenn, if all goes well tomorrow, let's try to do a special meeting on the 12th. All right. We'll make that happen. Thank you. Okay. Next. Uh, item on the agenda is the governor's conference glenn as um many of you are aware we have been um, encouraged to attend um, some of these events um, um, those who sit across from me are veterans of attending um, the governor's conference on tourism uh, lorette and teresa and um, in my conversations with lorette she thinks this is a, a great idea we did offer to any of you who wish to go um, otherwise your um, staff is going to attend this to um to to do some things. I'm going to personally attend the co-op um, session um, in there as a part of this, intended to do that. And we are aware of there might be some other travel um, that comes up for need. We've never budgeted a line item in that. This activity will in no way cost $4,000 at, at all, but we're merely suggesting that um, you um, uh, appropriate $4,000 um, from your unexpended salary item into a travel and training um, I'm blind so that we would have some funds in there for things such as this. Thank you. Questions? I got a question. Who's going to approve the people that's going? You guys? Mr. Chairman has to sign all the travel arrangements. Okay. Fine. I think it's a good point to do it. Okay. Is a motion? I saw a move. Do okay. you have a second? I think I'm second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Glenn. Um, now we're going to go and uh, do some reports uh, with us. We have Houston Chanel with us from the Mountford Point Marine Memorial Association. And we don't want to forget Mr. Tate is, is back up here to make sure everything Always. goes right. Always. <laughs> <laughs> You Keep us straight. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, and I, I would gladly give this seat to John at, at any moment. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be rushing for it. No, no. Uh, and I'm here this afternoon to say thank you all because with the support that you have shown uh, in our abilities to start the Mount Vernon Memorial, we've established a groundbreaking date, which will be February the 27th at 10 hundred. That event will take place at the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. Uh, it will be followed by a reception at the Chapter 10's building, which is located at 148 Bryn Mawr Road. 
and all of you are invited to be a part of that. Uh, one of the things we did in picking the date to do that, because we were going to move forward the monument with or without a groundbreaking, but we were able to pick that date. That particular weekend, we're doing the groundbreaking that Friday, that weekend, Friday and Saturday, the Southern Regional National Mouth Point Reading Association will be in town for our regional meeting. So we'll have a number of individuals in town for that. Uh, and then that Saturday, we're also doing the African American History Month uh, dinner banquet, uh, where we normally highlight the Moffat Point Marines. So as I'm learning from this group, you have to tie things together to make it more than just one event. We've done that with this weekend. Uh, we have Moffat Points that have already signed on as far away as San Francisco, California, uh, some coming out of Florida, and we expect this to be a, a paramount day. And again, I'm just here to invite all of you and thank you for your support uh, on the project. Thank you, Sean. Any uh, questions? Houston, uh, we're excited about the groundbreaking. Awesome. No, I'm excited about it. Great. <laughs> Great. I bet Houston is too. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see you there. Thank, thank you, you, thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, now we have with us uh, Dave Brown, Chairman of the Board uh, for the Museum of the Marine. Give us an update. Thank you very much. Colonel, good to see you. Mr. Chairman, members, of the Distinguished Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority. It's good to be here. Uh, I came with uh, my boss. Man of the Year. The Man of the Year. Man right? of the Year. I said, I said, I said to Joe as I, as I got here, I said, boy, I'm I feel honored to be your assistant. <laughs> we seem to go everywhere. Um, so will be the man of the year by his lunch. You know that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now we, we split it. <laughs> so I pressed this this button. Yeah, I didn't press the part. There you go. That's us. Look, I, I'm here. To, number one, thank you for last year and all the great start that we we've got. And I want to show you what happened uh, last year. As you know, last year, a year ago, we were boxed into Onslow County. That's a true statement. And we spread our wings last year. We, we went to Wilmington for introduction of the uh, mu museum down there at Landfall Country Club. We've been to New Bern. We've been to Washington two or three times, New York twice. Joe and I have been up there. Uh, Joe and I went out to Tennessee to meet um, uh, Fred Smith, who owns FedEx and a former Marine captain from Vietnam. Uh, we, we saw his team get beat by the Pittsburgh Steelers in his, in his own box. In his own box. And <laughs> I'll come back to Fred because he's given us some guidance and, and things like that. Uh, Virginia, I, um, I met up with uh, Chuck Geiger, Geiger, Camp Geiger. He's the uh, nephew of Roy Geiger, who's never, and he's taken on um, a mission to to get one of the halls named Geiger Hall so that's been a kind of a assignment and, and he's actually going to be coming on the board I think here in a month or so uh, either he or his son who's a senior vice president with Walmart and I'll take either one of those fine mm -hmm. fellows we have an initiative with uh, up in Maryland uh, that was uh, one of our directors working there and a lot of promise and hope out of that but uh, it's it's tough uh, and again we've been in New York there, there's nobody that doesn't love us up in New York. Uh, there's a there's competition ahead of us. Uh, getting there, and and Joe and I, we have had several phone calls. Interestingly enough, we called the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, and they had raised 1.5 million dollars at a gala. So I was playing the phone call around with them. They, a year ahead of time to get a venue, they had to put two hundred thousand dollars down, and then pay the rest before the event. Well, we can't play that game, obviously, uh, but we have initiated, uh, and I'll, I'll flip this one here because that's over there in the upper right-hand corner. It was I got this gadget here. Let's see this right there. Um, we've initiated get a gala for for next year, and. And we've talked to the Marine Corps detachments up there, the Staten Island um, uh, detachment and uh, of the Marine Corps League. And uh, he's working on Fort Hamilton and or Fort uh, uh, Watson up there, whereby it uh, won't cost us any upfront money. Uh, so that's, that's kind of really nice. Now, 
Uh oh, something happened here. I got assistance. Did we skip something? So uh, here we're here's where we are, and uh, we've got a gala uh, settled started in uh, down there in uh, Wilmington, one in New Bern. We've got lots of events in the next slide here in this t in this uh, county, and uh, we're going. That advice from uh, Fred Smith. He, he says that we got a local museum. He's been the co-chairman up there of the national one. And he was asking Joe and I, he says, you, when we got together, he said, do you all want advice or money or both? And both Joe and I go, both, like that, when we were meeting with him. And he backed away a little bit, but not too far, I think. He, he, as, as the former co-chairman of the National Museum uh, Fundraising Committee, he says that having talked to uh, the boss up there uh, that it would be disloyal for him to at this point give us any kind of funding support he says I'll get back to you in six months so I think that'll wear away he's still get giving us um, uh, some lo local people when he says local he means state and it's and we could call it regional because Maryland Virginia South Carolina um, any rate uh, I'm following his advice and really focusing on the state of North Carolina, just so you all know where I'm coming from. And we do have this New York thing going on. We have some more New York items that we want to support us right now. But I'm at 2015 being pulled the trigger year. Uh, we've gotten out there, and as Ken, you know, we're <laughs> you're looking for instant <laughs> gratification. It's it's a hard sell, and but it's working. So I'm going to call this year pull the trigger because I'm going to ask people to really commit to uh, a letter of intent, <coughs> a pledge, and, and make it on. We don't need the money right this second. We need the money um, yeah, a couple years from now. Uh, that's when we get everything approved. So anyway, that's it. We're looking for state and federal money, just so you all know that. Uh, I've got a, a person working on that. Uh, so now we'll click here. So let's take a look at what's going on here in our little county. Uh, we have groundbreaking, just like our good friends and I put April 1st first down there so that's going to be probably then we've got the permit sign the okay from the uh, Secretary of the Navy and permit sign uh, and then we're showing up all our our dollars and things like that um, and negotiating with the subcontractors so pro construction is our prime contractor and so those details are being worked out Jay Salas Colonel Jay Salas is the uh, OIC officer in charge our uh, director in charge of the uh, of the groundbreaking. Then you saw uh, Wilmington Gala was April 15th, but then we have our golf classic, uh, which is going to be our fifth annual uh, golf April classic. 25th. Now is that the 15th or the 25th? 25th. 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 Okay. okay. What happened? I'm you said the 15th. Oh yeah. Where? Okay. You said 25th. okay. What's that? Wilmington. Yeah, Wilmington. Wilmington. Okay. Now the next big box uh, is our fifth annual golf tournament. And we've done okay with that. Uh, we're we're going along this year. Uh, we had teamed up with uh, Hope for the Warriors in the past, but we had to kind of break up because they have a big fundraising uh, run right before then. So they they were the last two years they didn't want to ask people for funds when they were asking for themselves. So we've had a congenial breakup on that. Uh, Newburn is this summer, uh, and that's going to be at the their country club, Newburn Country Club. Uh, I have a new thing going, the Wounded Warrior Art Exposition, and that was an idea I came up with uh, because the Wounded Warriors always do athletic things. They play golf, they, they uh, go fishing, they're uh, playing volleyball and basketball with no legs on the floor and all that type of stuff. Everything, when I saw this Invictus Games going on uh, in England, and I saw one of our uh, female sergeants from the Wounded Warrior Battalion, going over there, Prince Harry's sponsoring it. Uh, I said, I wonder, we're, we're gonna have a museum here. So it seems like we should have some art or something like that. Bounce it off the Wounded Warrior Battalion. They just started a big uh, uh, art therapy program. And so I then talked to the, the North Carolina um, uh, Arts, Council. Arts, Arts Council, thanks Joe. Uh, and, and lo and behold, uh, they were so enthusiastic, it didn't take long to get everybody surround, surrounded. So this thing's rolling as fast as it can. I've actually got the uh, PNC Center, because I'm going to go statewide next year. So this, everybody knows about in our state, the uh, Museum of the Marine. And I, 
I get the PNC Center. They're going to give it to me for nothing. Uh, so we'll have the next one will be a state contest, and then the winners and honorable mentions will be posted, uh, put put up in the um, legislative building up there in Raleigh. So that's that's good. A lot of visibility. We hope to get out of that one there. Um, we have a Jacksonville Gala. We've had that. This will be our fifth year of that. Um, and then the ribbon cutting is, I'm going to guess it's in October. Four to six months, it said it would take it, depending on the terrain and things like that, according to pro construction, how much you have to put in there. And Jay's in charge of that. So with that, I, I only can ask you, there's not a lot of things that at this moment I need your support. But I, I tell you what I really need. To build this thing, I need everybody rowing the boat together. Uh, this, this is a big adventure. It's going to be $20 million until we get it all launched and things like that. But anybody in this room who hears something, thinks that there might be a donor somewhere up in Raleigh or up, uh, in, in Charlotte, wherever, uh, please give Joe or I a phone call, and uh, we'll be on top of it. So we've got a lot of leads, uh, hundreds of leads at this point, and we're all, the two of us are almost to the point of being overwhelmed with them and, and making sure they happen. But that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Doug. Good presentation. Any questions? Uh, yes, on the art exposition, mm -hmm. the Wounded Warriors, was that second through the 28th? Yes, uh, it's going to be basic. It's, I've learned how to write the, uh, the uh, instructions for it, but apparently we're going to have a turn in the artworks on the 31st and things like that. Hang them all up across the street here. Right across the street. And, uh, right. and, and uh, then on the, about the 5th, we're going to have a big um, celebration over there, uh, dinner or something like that on that order. And uh, the winners are going to be made known. And we have a, a very fine artist uh, who's going to make the judgments. And that will all be done beforehand. Uh, so then it's going to be open for a whole month. Right. Uh, okay. For visitors now on your groundbreaking I'm making an assumption that everybody in Norfolk has signed off and you're ready to go everybody in Norfolk has signed everybody well who it's needs to sign anything that's that's, that's right anything. we we have uh, got the paperwork from Norfolk what was it last week we got it last week and uh, endorsing all that and then Bruce's has, Bruce has got to sign it and somebody else has got to sign it and Bruce Gombora has got to sign it and and then back on up it goes, but th that's all being done. Okay. Thank you. Now the ground, what, do you have a time for the groundbreaking? We don't. Uh, it's going to be in within 60 days, and I'm thinking, and Bruce, I'm thinking April 1st would be when I'd like to schedule it. Uh, even though we might have some bulldozers out there and some trees toppled and things like that, uh, if I want to get the, I want to get the lieutenant governor down here and some other people are saving the governor for the, the next ribbon cutting type of thing um, so I'm, I've decided because we none of us know exactly with it's been a question ever since we received the Secretary of Navy's letter authorizing it when will we have it it's pretty hard to guess so there's a lot of pieces and uh, sub we have to negotiate with subcontractors and all that type of stuff and so I'm just gonna put April 1st down that's what I've been doing without making it hard and fast even though we might have something going I'm sure we're gonna have it done by then Right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you for the update. We appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Sounds like you're making good progress. We're making progress. <laughs> We're. Okay. Um, Ashley, Onzo Sports Commission. Hi. We wanted to give you guys an update on what we have going on. Um, a little twofold with Jennifer um, Johnson in the office. She's handling all of our local events. Um, sent me a whiteboard picture of everything we have going on. Um, so we wanted to give a huge shout out to Susan and her staff. Um, the City of Jacksonville Pickleball Tournament. It's the fourth annual? Yes. Fourth annual um, event is happening March 5th through 8th and they're expecting close to 130 or over which would be their largest turnout. Um, so those are individuals that are staying in our hotels and spending good money on our restaurants. They love this area. Um, they love, honestly, they love the hotels more than anything sometimes. Um, we also have Battle at the Beach, which is a high school girls soccer tournament. 
Um, so he has 28 teams, um, including our county teams coming in. Um, they'll be rotating amongst all the different high schools in Onslow County and then concluding over at OCSA's park, and that's March 6th and 7th. Um, Hall of Fame is gonna be March 7th. Um, we are inducting Billy Joe Morgan, as well as John Lyles from Swansboro um, Track and Field. So if you're interested, feel free to come and see us. Um, we'll be on base, so if anybody does want tickets or needs base passes, just let me know. Um, Run, Berry, Run Baby Run is a 5K, um, working with the Onslow Pregnancy Center. This is a brand new event um, that we're partnering with them on, um, kind of showing them the ropes on what needs to happen um, and helping them with that event. We also have Ainsley's Angels, which this is gonna be a part of a national circuit. Um, they're hosting a 10K, 5K, and one mile option. Um, if you don't know about Ainsley's Angels, these are individuals that they pair captains, which are abled body runners with angels. Um, sorry, the angels are the abled body runners. The captains are disabled children or adults that go in wheelchairs. Um, it kind of came out of the Team Hoyt Virginia Beach, so if you don't know about Team Hoyt, um, feel free to go and research them. They're at the Boston Marathon every single year, big running community. Um, but they're actually pulled from Virginia Beach, South Carolina, um, some chapters along North Carolina, so we're expecting a pretty good turnout with that event. Um, on kind of my side of the house, um, I'm more administrative working with the nonprofit, but we are um, working on some larger events, so I've got the Expo, um, the Marine Federal Credit Union Football Jamboree um, on August 14th. We are waiting on two more um, teams to commit to us. We think we have them. Um, and they're coming from all kind of over Eastern North Carolina, which is great. Um, and then we are, am I supposed to announce this? Sure. Okay. Um, I, I asked because we're slowly, well, slowly, we're quickly pulling this together. Um, the Jackson Alonzo Sports Commission will be hosting Jacksonville's first ever uh, Krispy Kreme challenge. Um, so Whoa, <laughs> what is the date of that? <laughs> so um, we are in the process of getting everything permitted because we will be crossing over a state maintained road um, or requesting that we cross over a state maintained mm -hmm. road. If you do not know <laughs> what the lawyers. Krispy Kreme challenge is, it's always your fault. It is a um, state does it. We're going to have um, a 1.7 out and back. So you'll run 1.7 enter into Krispy Kreme's parking lot. Hopefully that will not be a madhouse of cars. Um, you try and eat a dozen donuts as quickly feet. as you can, <laughs> and then you run back. Who's sponsoring the bar bags? Um, yeah, so uh, we are working with um, Jacksonville PD to make sure that the course is safe. Krispy Kreme, obviously, on making sure that the event's taken care of, social media. Um, we have gotten some buy-in with base on making sure that the Marines know about it. Um, we're hopefully going to be partnering with the city if they don't laugh at us when we ask for their street sweepers. Um, there won't be any grubs. <laughs> um, so that is, we're looking at a spring date because we want to capitalize on the excitement of having Krispy Kreme open. So, um, that is kind of <laughs> top um, on our list of things as well as kind of juggling the rest of it as well. So the Sports Commission is very, very busy. Um, we've still got a ton of events in April. May hits and we've got um, the President's Cup with NCYSA is happening um, over Mother's Day weekend. Um, and I have a meeting with North Carolina High School Athletic Association on Thursday to start discussing what else we can be hosting um, if we were to update any of our facilities and as things come on board, what would they want to host here? And what do they think would be a viable option um, so that we're weighing those into the decision-making process, hopefully, as well. So that's what the Sports Commission's up to. Thank you, so, Ashley. No problem. Appreciate it. Any questions for Ashley? Any? Let me know if you want to compete and eat a dozen donuts. <laughs> He'll run and I'll eat the donuts. We'll challenge Thank you. All right. Um, okay, next order of business is the tourism report from Onslow Chamber of Commerce. Teresa. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we attended Showfest in Charlotte on January 24th and 26th which is hosted by the North Carolina Festival and Events Association. 
we had 202 nominations for the county awards, which are called the Ardies. And every year we take the winners of those awards and enter them into the state award program. We won nine awards this year. Wow. Yeah. 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 This is the most ever, and they only give out 27 awards. So Onslow County won one third of all the nice. awards wow. in the state. Yeah. Uh, we won for Best Print Media for Sneeds Ferry Shrimp Festival Program Book, Best Event Poster for Earth and Surf, Best T-Shirt for Great Mullet Run from the Hammock Speech State Park, Best Non-Print Media, the Jacksonville Rotary Speckled Trout Tournament, the Best Event Photo, Camp Lejeune <coughs> St. Patty's Day Engineer Challenge, the Best Sponsorship Packet, National Night Out, yeah. Best Website, Surf and Earth, Best Brochure, Small, Swansboro <coughs> Historic Homes Tour, Best Brochure Large, the Sneeds Ferry Shrimp Festival. So you can see That's we right. covered everything. Okay. Swansboro, okay. Jacksonville, Sneeds Ferry, everybody got a little piece of the pie. Um, I just wrapped up my chairmanship of Coast Toast on January 30th. Woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> and as the past chair, I'll be present at the meetings, but it'll free me up to take a new position. I accepted the vice president position on the board of the North Carolina Festival and Events Association, which means the next year I'll be president. So not, a, not, not, a, not a lot more work. So. Um, on Saturday, I'll be attending a Mountain to Sea conference for the Mountain to Sea Trail in Burlington uh, to get some more details about the, our participation in the trail. Um, on April 6th at 10 a.m. at the Com Commerce Center, we'll be hosting a um, press conference. Uh, the mayor has agreed, as well as the chairwoman of the uh, county commissioners, Barbara Eitner, to join us for that press conference. They will be releasing the new trail guidebooks that kind of look like this. This is like a segment 10. We will have our own segment. Um, and so we'll be releasing those books on those dates. Um, on a side note, if you'll remember at the last meeting, I, I kind of talked to you about Mama Goose and jet lag coming in and, and doing the trail and stuff. So they sent me a nice postcard. I thought I'd read what they wrote. Uh, Dear Teresa, wow, where to start? We did it. We completed our awesome 1,150-mile through hike of the Mountain to Sea Trail. We cannot begin to express our gratitude for the kindness of folks along the way. It will always remain the highlight of our journey. In particular, your hospitality and genuine friendship was inspiring. Thank you so much for hosting us, the Christmas dinner with the veterans, the visit to the Memorial Gardens, the walk with the city employees and the vets, the press connections. All we can say is thank you, and we sincerely hope the trail continues to go through awesome Jacksonville and Onslow County. You're always grateful friends, Mama Goose jet lag. So couldn't have do done it without the city. Glenn, thank you so much for putting that together. I think they really had a good time, and they were impressed by the gardens. Um, so I really hope we can get that done before they do the walk for the vets. Um, Working with Teresa on two major events, the uh, Onslow Engaged and the Jacksonville Art Block. Things are running fairly smoothly, I think. We've uh, been able to convert some of our television and some of our, our state magazine, some radio, um, and you did the ad for us for the Our State, so mm -hmm. thank you so much. We appreciate that. Yep. Um, so that is running smoothly. All things look good. Um, as well, we'll be attending the Governor's Conference, uh, Lorette and I, on March 8th through the 10th in Pinehurst. Uh, looking forward to that. We also attended the uh, Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina Open House in Cary last week. That was pretty interested. We got to uh, get in there and, and do a presentation for an event we want to hold. They seem very uh, um, promising that they may get the governor and some of their folks aboard, so uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, as far as the occupancy town tax, we're down 
5.9% in November, which was across the board. No, no, anybody particularly the beach was down, the city was down, and the surrounding areas were down. We're still up for the year 3.8%, which is about 37,000 above at the same time this year. So, any questions? Any questions? Teresa, thank you. Congratulations. What are you going to do with all those? <laughs> they go to, we'll, uh, we'll pass them out at the Yardies to all the events. They get to, we want them to shine them all over the county. Thank you. Lorette, do you have anything? No. Good report. And thank you so much. We appreciate it. A lot of good stuff going on. All right. Um, Occupancy tax collections. Um, I think we passed. Everybody's got a copy of it. Glenn, do you want to go through it? We'll just simply highlight quickly. Uh, as you can see, um, for the um, month of December, um, we are up eight percent over where we were in December of 2013. So hopefully our our, our um, hospitality partners will feel good about that part of it alone. And then among the um, thus far in fiscal year 15. Um, we're basically flat. I mean, it was one tenth of a percent decrease in that, and that's not with all facilities reporting at this time. So we that that's looking uh, a little better. And so, looking at the two-year trend for the same time, we're actually one percent up above that at this moment. Um, these are the charts with the trending. Uh, the the brown is um, indicating um, this fiscal year, as you can see. Um, you know, obviously. Um, the, um, the year um, of, uh, 13 and uh, FY11 were obviously great years, and so consequently, um, overall, that is. But we are above um, 13 and tw 11 and 12 over from past years. So um, that's some, some reconciliation on that for the Western Boulevard area. In the McDaniel Drive area, um, that one is also showing some, um, some stress of that um, activity as it was there. Mm -hmm. And um, the all other areas, um, it's basically, as you can see, kind of running flat at that point. And in total collections, um, as you can see by just eking out, the green line is the OMSLO two-year uh, proposal there. And because we made the dot bigger, you can't tell that it's 1% above that as it was. But um, it's tracking with that. And if it will continue on that green line, we'd be happy, I think. Okay. Do we have any... Uh Rears, money in rears. That's nothing to report of. Well, thank you, Glenn. Appreciate that report. I'm glad we're on track. Um, future reports and activities. I think we've got a program of work for March and look over the application and then in April go through that approval process. We're going to do our special meeting on the 12th, hopefully. Same time. Things go well tomorrow. We would propose it to be 1:30 or 2, um, some time like that, that would work for you. 1:30 still good for everybody. Yeah. Okay. Let's try to stick with that. Um, board members, any comments? Good meeting, Ken. Good meeting. Very excited. Everything going on. So. Uh, Rick, uh, Rick, the only thing I want to say is that I miss you. I miss you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie's on his own island. Now you're on your own. Yeah, you're no. Your own island. <laughs> we got buddy, confidence man. in you. All right. All right well, I think uh, Sergeant Major had I, I have two quick things, if I may, Mr. Chairman. On uh, March 21st, we're having our fourth annual poker run for anybody who wants to get out and, and ride. Uh, it's our fourth annual. But also, from uh, April 20th to 24th, I'm also on the, the board that runs the Marine Corps Expos. I just come from Camp Pendleton. They had 120 vendors. We should have about 130 to 140 vendors here for that week. Okay, uh, there's about six vendors that actually live here in Jacksonville, but everybody else should be coming into town. And, and out of Pendleton, not like out of Pendleton, out of Pendleton, they have a hotel on base and probably 20% stayed on base. Everybody else is staying. Here, they gotta stay out in town. What I don't want in the past, because I've been on this thing now for 14 years, is they go to Wilmington and they go to New Bern. We need to keep them here. There's no excuse for it anymore. And I'll need to talk to the chamber about one of those things that they do at Pendleton that we might be able to do here. So if there's anything we can do to assist or <coughs> facilitate, please don't don't hesitate. 
Yeah. Taught us no. Because that's uh, that's that's big. Uh, they have some big companies that come to town, and they're the ones that usually leave. You town. know why they stay in Wilmington, or I, uh, I mean, we've got some first class. Yeah, we do now. Absolutely, we do. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they're going on what passed. We right. need to get them to Educate know what's them. happening now. Yes. Uh, and and I'll just bring it up. What they did in, in out in Oceanside out there mm -hmm. is the chamber showed up on day on the first day and had a bag from the community welcoming them to Jacksonville, North Carolina. Say this is what we can do for you. And I was going to talk to her later, right. but I mean. That's just an example of what they do out there, because uh, they can stay on base, but they don't. Here they have to stay in Jacksonville, but I want to, we'd like to keep, keep them, them here. Yeah. Keep them here. Yeah. Okay, without any further business, uh, I'll need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.